Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. First, I want to give all honor, praises, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honor to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing this true doctrine across the four winds of the earth and all truth and in sincerity. On the mod are we for the Mississippi count. Lord willing, this be edifying lesson. And this lesson is going to go to or go into um, Jacob's trouble. But the title is going to be Visualize the Predicament. Visualize the predicaments because it's going to be some situations we're going to be in. And, um, you know, we speak about it through prophecy, you know, when we're teaching, when we're on the highways and byways. And um, I know Apostle Gabar always mentions, you know, we have to think about these things, visualize it, put ourselves in particular scenarios or positions, predicaments, you know. Because when these times come, you know, we're going to have to move through the spirit, no doubt. But we don't really know where we're going to be, the position we're going to be in. You know, we don't know if we're going to be some of the brothers who are taking the concentration camps. We don't know if we're going to be some of the brothers who are just going to have to flee and be as pilgrims, you know, out in the wilderness. We don't know if we're going to be some of those brothers who may have to be put to death, you know? So we have to visualize and think about these things. We have to put ourselves in these predicaments just thinking about it. And when you go into the word visualize, just through Google, the definition through Google, visualize means form of mental image of imagine. So we have to imagine just different scenarios, different predicaments. You know, visualize them in my in our heads. How will we handle it? What will we do? Now we know the first thing we're gonna do is pray to Hab Hashem and move through the spirit and, and pray that he allows us to have guidance through his spirit via the angels, man. But we still have to think about certain things because it's gonna be some it's gonna be bad, man. You know, it's gonna be really bad. It's going to be worse than we can imagine. Because what did the scripture say? Uh, it's going to be a time like never before since there was a nation, man. So the worst thing you can think about is going to be way worse than that. Okay? And when you go into the word predicament, it means a difficult, unpleasant, or embarrassing situation. Now... There's going to come a time when these demons are going to put us publicly on a wide scale in the media, on television, trying to demonize us. You know, our faces are going to be seen on local news stations, you know, uh, uh, the, these um, big news stations, you know. CNN, Fox, MSNBC, it's, it, it, we're going to be put on a, a wide scale being made a spectacle. And your friends, your family, your job, all these people are going to start seeing you. And they're going to or seeing us. And we're going to be doing on videos or teaching on the highways and byways, cussing out Esau, cussing out our own people, telling them that the Lord is going to destroy them. First and foremost, tell them who our powers are, truly are, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. When Yahweh is the Heavenly Father and his name is, or his name means, he is. And our Savior, the only begotten Son, name is Yahweh Shai, which means he is our Savior, he is our Deliverer. And these two 
powers are the powers of uh, 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 Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as well as the nation of Israel as a whole. And that Yahweh Shai is only coming back for his elect. You know, these things are going to be publicized and they're going to try to seem as if we're, you know, uh, um, terrorists, you know, that we're, we're uh, conspiracy theorists, that we're, they're going to even go as far as saying that we're Satanists. When the truth of the matter is, we're prophets of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Operatas are with those men. Okay? So, we have to visualize ourselves in these particular predicaments and, and how we're going to conduct ourselves, how we're going to behave. You know, are we going to stand boldly for the name Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Are we going to fold because of the difficult and unpleasant situation, the embarrassing situation, you know? Because being in this truth, man, we're becoming outcasts to this society, man, because we're contrary to this society. Because the society flourishes and operates off complete wickedness. Because it's run by a wicked nation of people. The Edomites. The so-called white man. Esau. And it's spoken in the book of Job chapter 9 verse 24. That the earth was given into the hand of the wicked. He covers the faces of the judges thereof. If not, then where and who is he? And when this devil come back into power, you know, he, he's been just ruling this earth with complete wickedness, man. Doing everything contrary to the scriptures. You know, casting off the laws of Yahweh Bashem Shai and putting forth his own laws. Using the Bible to dictate and use it as a weapon against the nation of Israel. You know? So when this devil come down with that great wrath, how are you going to conduct yourself? How are we are going? How are we going to conduct ourselves? How are we going to be? Are we going to be firm in our belief? Are we going to be firm in our faith? You know, or are we going to? fall weak and bow down to Baal, bow down to this system, man. We have to pray to Yahweh Bashem Yahshai that we remain strong in the spirit. We remain strong in the faith because we're going to be tried. We're going to be tried. The time is going to come that we're going to be tried. So these scenarios, these different situations, you have to visualize them. Or should I say we have to visualize them? And we have to really think about them, these predicaments, put ourselves in those positions. Okay? This is the book of Matthew, chapter 10, starting verse 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents. And harmless as dove, right? Because when we're out on highways and byways, preaching and teaching this gospel, hey man, we're, we're we're on the front line, man. We're exposed to elements in danger. You know, we have a covering or a protection that heads from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. That's what keeps us safe out there. But we have to wholeheartedly believe that, you know, brothers have experienced situations where altercations come about at the camps. 
individuals brought weapons, threatening brothers at camps. And there's been multiple other situations. But the, the, the ones that I know of, brothers stood boldly. Brothers were steadfast, unmovable. Okay? And that's the mindset we have to be in. That's the spirit we have to be in. That's the strength and faith we have to pray for so that we can be bold. We can be steadfast, unmovable when these different situations, these different altercations or these different predicaments come uh, upon us. Okay. Beware of them, but beware of men. For they will deliver you up to the councils and they will scourge you in their synagogue. Because, yeah, they're going to come for us, man. It's in the scriptures. This devil is going to come for us. All right. But we don't supposed to worry. We don't supposed to uh, 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 fret. We don't supposed to trip. You know, because we supposed to be in the spirit. Everything of the past is for our forelearning, man. Roughly paraphrased. We've, we've read, we've studied, we've learned through the spirit of Yahweh Shem and Yahweh from the teaching of our apostles and elders on down, man. We, we've uh, uh, read and understand that the apostles, the disciples, the followers of Yahweh Shai have gone through this before. Nothing is new under the sun. So we're going to have to go through it. The servant is not greater than his master. When we come in this truth, we had to be prepared to carry the cross as Yahweh Shai did. Okay? So, when we're delivered up, what man would you be? A man of the Lord? Or a man who's seeking to save his own life? Because the scripture says a man that seeks to save his life shall lose it. But a man that loses his life shall gain it. Roughly paraphrase. As a matter of fact, let me, let me get that. It's a lock, yeah. Let me pull that up real quick. Because you have to know what type of man you will be. All right. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 25. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it and whoever whoever and whosoever will lose his life for my name for my sake shall find it let me read that one more time matthew 16 verse 25 for whosoever will save his life shall lose it so if you bow down if you give in to this devil you know to so-called preserve your life then you're going to lose it, man. You're going to be destroyed, okay? And it reads on and says, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. So whoever stand boldly for your house shot, whoever, you know, be unmovable for your house by Hashem your shot, hey, he shall gain his life. He shall save his life, man. Okay? He shall receive that crown of life. All right. Verse 18, back in the book of Matthew 10, verse 18. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my, my sake, for the testimony against them and the Gentiles. Right. So some of us brothers are going to be brought in front of these governors, these kings, you know, of this, this, this world. Of this, this, these rulers of this uh, uh, kingdom. Hey, and we're gonna speak through the spirit, man. 
Yahweh Shah has come back to destroy this place. Set up a righteous king. You know, we are the nation of Israel, the so-called Negro, Latinos, and Ava Mary, the most highest Yahweh Bashim Yahshai chosen his people. We have served our captivity, and now Yahweh Shai is returning to redeem his elect and tear down this wicked kingdom and set forth a righteous kingdom. You know? And so on and so forth. But the point is, we're going to let them know, as well as our people, these our uh, 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 the nation of Israel, those unbelievers, the Gentiles, that they're going to be destroyed, destroyed also. Because the scripture says, two-thirds of Israel shall be, shall be cut off and die. You know, those are those undesirables. Those who wouldn't hearken, wouldn't listen, wouldn't repent, who want to continue living wickedness, man. They're going to be destroyed. And they're going to come back through the loins of the Lord's elect in the kingdom of heaven and have the law, statutes, commandments written in their inward parts, you know. But they're going to be destroyed on this side for their wickedness, man, and their iniquities, though, okay? Verse 19, but when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given to you, it shall be given you in the same hour where ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. Right, so the words that we're going to speak, man, the things that we're going to say when we're delivered up to these, uh, uh, these, these governors, these kings, it's going to be the words of your how about send me out shy, okay? It's not going to be our words. It's never our words. We're ambassadors of Yahweh Bashim Shah. The spirit speaks through us. We're vocal vessels of the heavenly father and his son. Okay? It's not our words. It's not our words now. It's not going to be our words then. It's always through the spirit, man. Always through the spirit. Okay, let me get another scripture. It's still going to be in the book of Matthew. We go to Matthew 24 and Matthew chapter 24 and 21. Because, you know, we have to, like I say, again, we have to visualize and think about the predicaments, putting ourselves in these situations, man. Because if, 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 if we're going to be delivered to these kings and these uh, uh, governors, if we're going to be rounded up and taken to these concentration camps, if we're going to be rounded up and be beheaded, you know, what are you going to do? Are you going to fold? Are you going to break? Are you going to stand boldly? Are you going to have that spirit of, of Daniel? In the land, lions then. Are you going to have the spirit of Meshach, Rashad, or the Bendigo when they was put in the fiery furnace? Hmm? You know, these, these are the scenarios we have to think about. The situations we have to put ourselves in. Visualizing ourselves in these predicaments. Because it's coming. The Lord said he is, a man, he is not a man that he can lie. If he said it, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. How is it going to play out? Actually, we don't know. But is it going to play out? Yes, it's going to happen. Okay? This is the book of Matthew. Chapter 24. Verse 21. For then shall great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. Now, what is that talking about? What 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 is, what does that mean? That means it's gonna be some some terrible times coming, some very bad times coming. 
worse than slavery, worse than the Babylonian captivity, worse than the uh, uh, the bondage in Egypt, worse than Jim Crow, worse than it is now. There's a time coming; it's gonna be like never before. From the ancient days to the present times that we're witnessing now. The time that's coming is going to surpass all these captivities, slaveries, everything. Bad situations. So that's why we have to play these things out in our minds. We have to visualize these different um, predicaments put ourselves in them as many as you can think of through the scriptures man through the spirit because we don't know which, which, which one we're going to be in but we're going to be tried we know that because the scripture says it. this is the book of Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 7 it said alas for that day is great so that none is like it none no, no day is like it. No day we have seen. No, no, no time we uh, uh, read about. It's going to be like the time that's coming. Okay, this, 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 this last judgment that's coming. Jacob's trouble to World War Three. And all in between, it's going to be nothing like we've seen. Okay. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Who? Who, who is he? Who is he that's going to be saved out of it? That's the Lord's elect. The 144,000 men. 12,000 out of each tribe of the nation of Israel. From Judah all the way down to Issachar. 12,000 each tribe. 144,000 as well as that large multitude of men, women, and children that believe, okay? I'm going to give one more scripture and then I'm going to close it up. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. Who is the Lord's people? The nation of Israel. Who is Michael, that archangel, going to stand up for? The 144,000. The Lord select. And there shall be a time of trouble. Such as never was since there was a nation. Even so. Even to that same time. And it's like we just read that in Jeremiah. It's gonna be time before it's gonna be a time like never before since there was a nation, man. Since the world existed. It's gonna be terrible times, evil times, bad times. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found within the book. If that's the elect. I'm going to get one more script. I said I'm going to close out another one. But I'm going to get one more. But that's the elect. That's who's going to be delivered. The elect. The Lord's elect. 144,000. The Lord's prophets. That's who's going to be saved. Let's see right here. What we got? Let's 
Slack, Slack, and almost there. Just want to make sure I got the start in the right spot. Okay, this is the book of First Peter, chapter 4, starting at verse 17. It says, For the time has come that judging must begin at the house of the Most High. Because judgment is going to start with those who know they're Israelites and are not doing what they're supposed to do. As far as preaching 100% truth, you know, not taking a bag, not come, uh, making a, uh, a covenant with Esau. Okay. And it first begins at us. What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of the most high? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, that's the Lord's elect who's going to scarcely be saved. Where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? They're going to appear in front of those missiles. They're going to appear in front of the sword. They're going to appear in front of famine. You know, they're going to be destroyed by all kinds of elements or, or predicaments or situations where there's wild beasts, where there's the sword, where there's famine. And the famine is going to be a horrible death, death because your body becomes a, a, a accountable itself. There's a scripture that speaks on that it is better to die by the sword than by famine. You know? So those who don't believe in Habashim Yahushua, you know, are going to have a, a horrible death, man. You know, and and we're going to see a lot of death around us. We have to think about that. You know, we don't know where we're going to be, what we're going to be doing. But you're going to have to, or we're going to have to think and visualize certain predicaments where this might have to leave your family. might have You might be gone and not be able to return to your family. But you can't let that destroy your mind. You got to have faith in how I out shot because everything that happens, every scenario that takes place, every predicament that you're in is because the Lord ordained it to be that way. You know, and you have to have faith that the Lord is going to see you through it and take care of your family, your loved ones or whatever. And at the end of the day, we have to remember we're going to see them again in the kingdom, you know. So we have let's let's visualize the predicaments. Let's think about these things. You know, like I say, Apostle Gabar mentioned it on many occasions, as well as the other apostles, other brothers, but you know, I'm just expounding on it now because we're approaching those times. So, hey, Lord willing, this was an edifying lesson. I want to give all honor, praises, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem Rakakodash. Double honor to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone and rule well. Peace and salutation to the hopeful elect. Shalom.